Today is the feast day of the city. Today is the feast day of the finding of the relics of St. Stephen, the first martyr, and of course it's also first Saturday, and the, the uh, devotions conclude with benediction of the Blessed Sacrament after Mass this morning. Remember the forgotten part of your first Saturdays, that is to say that you are meant to keep Our Lady company. Every mother asks only that of her children, thinking, talking, going over with her some of the mysteries of the rosary. So today I would suggest that you, in the spirit of St. Stephen, go through the sorrowful mysteries with her and see how in each one of those mysteries her divine son, and she herself of course, is forgiving people, doing horrible things to Jesus, but nevertheless she is praying for them and our Lord is offering, especially in the fifth sorrowful, forgiveness. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. These are, these days in the calendar are the days of devotion. Yesterday we had St. Um, Al- Alphonsus, excuse me, Al- yes, Alphonsus Ligori, and um, he's, the, he's the saint of devotion to the rosary and to the blessed sacrament in particular. In a general sense, he's, he's the saint for prayer. This is a quote I wanted to give you yesterday. In prayer, the, the way to conquer temptation is to be found. Prayer is the first way, the second way, and the third way. way. And if you'd asked me a thousand times, I would always repeat the same thing, prayer. And for praying, you probably would gain more 15 minutes before praying before the Blessed Sacrament than by all of the other spiritual exercises of the day. It's worth the trip. True, our Lord gives prayers everywhere. But he's made this promise, ask and you shall receive. And he has revealed to his servants that those who visit him in the Blessed Sacrament will gain a more abundant measure of grace. A beautiful thought. Today, particularly, we want to be praying to and through our Blessed Mother through her heart for those who offend our Lord. The terrible situation is, is painted by our Savior in the Gospel, the Jews, their destruction, the destruction of their people, their temple, and their city, because they did not know the things that were to their peace. That's the Gospel of today's Mass. So we pray that these souls might be spared. St. Alphonsus says, there's no one after God who loves us as much as this loving mother does. Mary obtained salvation for all who have recourse to her. If only sinners had recourse to Mary, they'd never be lost. What a thought. So, so in your charitable prayers, that's the idea of St. Stephen Charity, the the idea is to pray for those who are not on the way of salvation, seemingly. May they have a devotion to Mary. That's it. That's most pleasing. Wouldn't our Lord hear that prayer? May these people, these children of thine, wayward ones, to love your mother. Have at least a little love for your mother. What a difference that would make for eternal salvation. And in this kind of a prayer, and in our confidence in Our Lady, never forget that she is our mother. And St. Therese loved, loved to say, she's more of a mother than a queen. What a beautiful, profound thought that is. And the same, the same century in France, his, his feast is coming up uh, this coming week, St. John Marie Vianney, the curie of ours. He said, the love of all of the mothers of the whole world, it's a lot of love, because mothers always love their children, is ice in comparison with the love of the Blessed Mother for us. What a thought. Shouldn't we love this mother of ours very, very much? And shouldn't we be filled with confidence? People forget these profound truths, and that's why they can despair. But there's no room for despair for ourselves or for anybody else, not as long as we have such a mother. But I said at the beginning, these are the days of devotion in the calendar. What does that mean? That means that, yes, today the Church is underlining with St. Alphonsus the devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. They say he converted his city 
pretty much so when he was bishop of, of um, St. Agatha the Goths in Rome, in Italy. He could, just by getting people to make an evening visit to the Blessed Sacrament. Because back then, people used to walk around in the evening, the cool of the evening, like it was nice and cool. Last night after church, it was lingering a little bit because it was so pleasant after being in the inferno in here. Well, they would walk around and then they, they, they would sort of gravitate towards the town square, the city square, and there would be the cathedral, just as you have, um, just as you have in downtown Cincinnati, uh, Milwaukee, which is not a cathedral anymore, it's all desecrated. But the idea was a beautiful one, wasn't it? Well, he would get the people to come in, and he'd be waiting for them, and he would kneel on the side of the altar, and he would make up these beautiful prayers and meditations. And the people would just come in. There was no mass, no fast, nothing like that. Just they would come in, and they would pray before the Blessed Sacrament, and then before Our Lady. And that changed the whole tone of the city. Devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. That's devotion to Our Lady. Devotion. Confidence in her. Devotion. Now, today, what's the devotion? It's the devotion to relics. God has a time for these devotions to get started. And heaven begins then. There was a time for devotion to the angels. Before that, it was not allowed to be devoted to the angels. St. John said says that in, in, in the Apocalypse. Because there was a fear at the beginning that people would end up worshipping angels because they're so godlike. But when the time came, the angels, especially St. Michael, started to appear, and he's the angel of healing, as well as guardian angel of the church. Then, in the year 415, it was a time to start devotion to the relics of the saints. The church had preciously guarded many of them in Rome, but in the Holy Land, the very first martyr lay forgotten under a pile of stones in a field about 20 miles out of Jerusalem. And there was a priest in the chapel there, a katagamina it's called, and he used to sleep in the church by the baptismal pond to guard the church against thieves. Not a bad idea if you're in a bad neighborhood, I suppose. There he was sleeping by the baptistry. And He's in the half-light of, of the night, he sees a man of very venerable appearance walking slowly towards him. And he tells him, go see the bishop and tell him, the relics of St. Stephen, and my own relics too, are to be found in such and such a place. He doesn't do anything. Usually when there are these visions, you have to do it more than once. And he came back then, after a few nights, and he repeated the same message this time, he sent a message to the bishop who was at a council, and the bishop comes with some other bishops, and there's a ceremony, and there are a lot of people there, and people just had a feeling something's going to happen. A lot of sick people came. And um, under the pile of stones, sure enough, they found three coffins, and the first one that they opened, when they opened it, there was a kind of an earthquake or a tremor, and then a beautiful fragrance came out. No one had smelled anything like that before. Those are the relics of St. Stephen, the first martyr. And the other two were Gamaliel. He was a Jew and a Pharisee. He was a teacher of St. Paul when he was Saul. But at the end of his life, he professed our Lord's divinity. And the Jews bundled him out of town and killed him secretly because they didn't want any scandal. And then his son, Abba, he was martyred too for our Lord's divinity. As was St. Stephen, as you have it in today's um, epistle. So then... The relics were discovered, and they were put in Jerusalem, and then they were taken, St. Augustine talks about this, a bit like the relics, sometimes St. Therese, or Curie of ours, or his heart, something like that, would come, and even the Novus Ordo would still do that today for some very famous saint. People would line up to venerate the relics. Well, that's how this all got started. And then when the relics came to a certain place, there were always miracles, miracles of healing. And our Lord wanted this devotion to the relics of the saints, we have it, don't we? Sometimes you're privileged to have one in your home. There's always the relics of two martyrs in the altar stone. And we have some of the beautiful relics of the saints, including St. Saint Anne, here to use on the altar for veneration on feast days. These are the days of devotion. Remember, all devotions are meant to make us, from the meaning of the word, to vow ourselves over, vow ourselves again to the service of God. What does that mean in practical terms? to Jesus, through Mary. What does that take us back to? Prayer. You want to know how to face temptation and conquer it? Prayer. Ask me again, I'll say the same thing. Third time, ask me a hundred, a 
thousand times to St. Alphonsus and all saints' prayer. But you pray with and through the saints, especially to the Queen of all saints. What a difference that makes. Let's join our Blessed Lady today and console her heart for Saturday by praying for the salvation of souls that might otherwise seemingly be lost. She's a mother. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen.